Hello fellow guitar geeks, this is the sound of the Revival Drive Compact from Origin Effects, and it is fun. I'm gonna need that. Let's just turn it off for a moment and you can hear the Fender Deluxe Reverb on its own without the pedal. This is clean. <laughs> I'll get into details in a moment, but this is one of those pedals that you just want to keep adding a little extra note. Just something just so you can hear that guitar play again. Just, it makes me want to play, and that is a good sign. I've just plugged it in. In fact, I intended to read through the manual and get these sample settings. So you, there's some sample settings for a pushed plexi and a tweed twin. And I'd started setting, setting that up and then just started, you know, plugged in the old albatross and, and away we go, and here we are. So that's the sort of pedal this is. It's one where you plug in and it just sounds like fun. I did read the manual a little bit, of course, because I'm in my 40s, and on a Saturday night, I like to get down with some reading. And so, basically, this is one of those amp recreation pedals, where it's not trying to push the mids like a Tube Screamer, or it's trying to distort everything. It's trying to sound like an amp, and it does it really, really well. If you are new to the channel, hello, my name's Andy. Welcome, hope you find something you like. If you've been subscribed for a while, welcome back. Nice to see you again. I'm going to delve straight into my top five tones from the Revival Drive Compact, and then we'll talk about the features, and then I will review the pedal, and we'll talk about pricing and build quality and all that kind of stuff. This is what I'm going to call a Justin Hawkins darkness tone. It really reminds me of Justin's guitar on Permission to Land, that first album. It's something I've been searching for for a while, and this nails it. <laughs> So it's got that chunkiness of that chugging, but it's got that brightness of that. I love this sound, and back when Justin Hawkins and the Darkness released that first album, I went in search of that tone and ended up with a Marshall JCM 800 and a Marshall Power Break. And that was a monster rig to try and take around to gigs where I was playing small shows. This is going through the Fender Deluxe Reverb, and this gets closer than I ever got in those days. This setting's based very loosely on the Tweed Twin suggested sample setting from the manual, and it's nice and chewy. And it goes beautifully with a neck pickup on a Strat. <laughs> Here's a setting that gives me a more high gain kind of sound. So I'm back on humbuckers and it sounds super fat. I backed off the gain and warmed up the EQ a little bit for some open chords on the neck pickup. And I have to say that tone just makes me want to play a simple chord and just hold it there. That is the sound of plugging into a really nice amp. And if I turn it off, I'm still playing into a nice amp, the, the Deluxe Reverb. But it's just flat and, and clean, as I like my Fender Deluxe Reverb to be. Put on that.
Now that might not appeal to a lot of people, but to me, just playing a simple G chord and hearing those notes just crunch over each other is, is a wonderful experience. Let's move on to the next one. Here's a setting for some raunchy blues. Strat again, this time middle pickup. <laughs> So with this one, it's kind of poking you in the eyes and punching you in the belly at the same time. There's a lot of low end there, but still enough space for a bass guitar. And then up the top, you've got this nice little drivey, but not too dirty. In fact, I could probably have a little bit more drive, if I'm honest, or maybe a touch less of the dry. Yeah, so let's get into the controls and talk about how this thing works and what all these knobs and switches do. It's a top mounted pedal with nine volts in as well. It needs about 100 milliamps, which is not much at all. But it's a drive pedal, so it shouldn't need much. We've got a wonderfully expensive looking and feeling foot switch. It's not clicky, um, it feels very resistant to the touch, and I don't know if that matters to you, but it feels like you've spent some money, if that makes sense. Then, top left, we've got output, also known as volume. Top right is the gain, then we've got a two-band EQ just here, and a presence knob. Then over here is a magic knob called the blend knob. So full this way gives us full overdrive pedal, no dry signal, and full this way gives us dry signal as if the pedal is switched off. We'll talk about these controls in a moment. Let's just test the range of this gain and this EQ. That's the starting position that Origin Effects recommend. It seems a bit quiet. It is, but maybe if you're boosting the gain, you're gonna get more volume as well. It still needs to be a bit louder. I love this blend knob. This blend knob, like with, with full on overdrive, that wouldn't quite sound as good, I don't think. It doesn't, it sounds somewhat cheaper. And then with that in the middle, where we're getting a 50-50, I guess, 50-50 mix of dry signal and uh, overdriven. just sounds more expensive. So maybe maybe that's all you need is that, that blend knob with an overdrive. Right, let's back that gain off a little bit and let's try let's try these highs. So it sounds more fendery over in that direction. Let's try that low. It sounds smaller with the lows down, and then it just sounds more bigger and more martially. Let's do, I get I get that is going to be a sort of a plexi sound. So that low knob is definitely bringing us something in the more martial territory. I want to check out this presence knob. See what this does. Let's bring it all the way down. It 
it doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. It didn't do like more area of frequency around 2 and 4K. It seems to be adjusting the headroom. Let me read the manual for a minute. <laughs> right, it, it, it says it right there. It says that presence affects negative feedback in the output stage, meaning that this kind of controls the headroom of the pedal. So that's another tweak maybe for that to get that gain. Let's let's do that. Let's move on down to this tiny little microcontroller here, the post drive EQ controls. We've got preamp or EQ1 or EQ2, and then what feels like a trim pot but isn't. That's metal and it's super solid. Unsurprisingly, when that's in preamp mode, it's supposed to operate as a preamp so you can go directly into your audio interface. Let's do that now. So for this part, I'm not going into the Fender Deluxe Reverb. I'm going straight into my audio interface uh, via a DI box. So it goes guitar, pedal, DI, interface, computer, and it'll sound like this, but I'll be hearing it through the cab still. This is what it sounds like to me in the room. It sounds brittle and nasty and not nice, but you're putting a preamp into a preamp. And I suppose you could fiddle with the EQ, but why would you when you have EQ1, which is meant for bright amps and EQ2, which is meant for darker sounding amps. So I'm gonna say that EQ1 is more for use with a Fender amp and EQ2 is more for use with a Marshall amp. Speaking of which, I have a Marshall style amp, this Victory Sheriff 25. In fact, let's do EQ1 on the Fender, which is what you've been hearing so far. <laughs> Now EQ2 on the Sheriff. Let's mess around with this, which is amazing fun. I did change it in the top five tones. That's all the way to the left. So it's thinner to the left, darker to the right. Let's do the same on EQ1 now with the Fender amp. So the, all the way to the left. It's a fun pedal. It does, I think it's the best part of this pedal, I think is, I, had, I hate to say low gain, but mid gain, mid with this OD and dry blend roughly in the middle. That, that's got to be my favorite setting. That's a great sound. Right, full review time. The Revival Drive Compact from Origin Effects a reassuringly heavy, no expense spared in the aesthetic overdrive pedal that is actually extremely versatile. Not as versatile as its big brother, the Revival Drive, but that thing kind of scares me. That has too many knobs and switches and, and definitely as a mainly live player, I could really make some mistakes twiddling knobs on that thing. Whereas this, I found a few sweet spots that I really enjoy and that blend knob is an absolute miracle worker. So this gain for me, between sort of two thirds and, and half, that's the sweet spot for me on the Strat. Um, it also did a wonderful marshally sort of thing with the SG Albatross earlier. And then basically get that gain, your blend, your volume and your EQ sorted, and then mess with this presence and this EQ down here for a little bit of fine tweaking. And this sounds expensive. And it kind of is.
No, there's not kind of about it. It is. It's not a cheap pedal, but this does not do cheap stuff. It's really, you could really do some fitness with this. It's so heavy. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I've had a blast playing this and I've decided that I'm definitely going to put it on my board because the way it sounds with a Strat style guitar, this uh, Magneto um, Eric Gale signature, that is a killer tone on that neck pickup. So I'm going to be putting this on my board and playing a show with it in a couple of weeks. I will get back to you on how it sounds. But so far, great pedal, lives up to the hype. Honestly, I kind of I kind of wanted to not like it so much because it's so hyped and because there's so many people saying how good it is and the anti-authoritarian in me, anti-authoritarian? The the, rebe the rebel in me wants to disagree with those people and say, well, it, it can't be that good. It turns out it is. If you want to buy this, there are affiliate links in the description, so I get a bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you. Thank you for supporting the channel. And as I said, that's going on my board. One of the best overdrive pedals I've ever played. It just simply sounds good, but that good comes at a price. Right, there is a subscribe button just there. Hit it if you fancy it. If you don't, no pressure, no worries. I'm sure I will catch you again in the future. Thank you for watching. I've been Andy, you've been you. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.